All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Matt, Play Fast Football. I'm going to do a quick video today talking about uh, some ideas I have about installing a middle school defense. Uh, Jeff Whitaker, one of the owners of Dome Hats, is uh, coaching as a head coach at a middle school here in Northeast Florida. So, congrats to uh, Coach Whitaker, Jeff Whitaker, uh, and I'm going to be helping him do some things. So, I'm going to give you some ideas uh, today on things that, for me as a former uh, head coach in high school, things that I would hope that kids were learning at the middle school level. All right, make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat, Sideline Replay Company. We use, uh, I've used them at every school I've been at for the last three years. We use them here at Bishop Kenny. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, great customer service, check out GameStrat, Dome Hats, Headwear Company. We use, again, Jeff, uh, the owner. I've been working with him now for a long time. Every school that I've been at, going all the way back to Ridgeview High School, every head coaching job I've had, and now here at Bishop Kenny, Play Fast. Here's one of our custom fitted uh, Crusader dome hats. Remember, stock hats suck. Uh, so check out dome. And this video is to help Jeff a little bit. Baker Sporting Goods Company we use locally here in Northeast Florida. Uh, they give us some of our coaches' gear, players' gear. Our uniforms are distributed from them. You can do fan gear from from them. You can get everything you need. One stop shop. Check out Baker Sporting Goods. Difference USA Ultimate Striking Machine. They go. Uh, they attach right to the racks that are in your weight room currently. If you want to strike violently, you got to work on striking violently. Why not do it all year round, not worrying about having to teach somebody how to hold a hand shield, a bag, a dummy. It's you and the Difference USA machine. Aaron Consulting, Dan and his group do a great job uh, educating people about the recruiting process, trying to educate families through the recruiting process, important dates, NCAA timelines, how to build college contacts, what you should be doing. Uh, in the recruiting game, but the best thing they do is they keep coaches at the forefront of it, right? So let's not get a divide between coaches and parents. We all want kids to get scholarships. We all want kids to play in college. It makes coaches look good. Families feel good. So let's not separate the coach. Let's work with the coach, with the families. Dan, Aaron Consulting do an unbelievable job. They've got, uh, you know, virtual clinics and webinars and things that they do all the time. So make sure you check them out. G-E-T-A-R-E-N.com. Brand Tech. A uh, company in Wisconsin, kind of a uh, Swiss Army knife of a company, all right? They can do customized uh, sublimated gear. They've made a pair of uh, Playfast sneakers for me that I can't wait to get and show on camera, all right? They've got uh, nutritional drinks. They've got drinks for halftime of football games with their Fizz products. They've got uh, the Q collar that they are distributing. They've got a fundraising platform called Change Up, all right? They've got so many different things that they are doing and so many uh, different avenues it's the Swiss Army Knife of Companies located in Wisconsin. Make sure you guys check out Brand Tech. Again, sublimation, energy drinks, also a disinfectant spray uh, that you can use for your weight room, your locker room, your jerseys, trying to eliminate staph infection, keep things fresh, keep things clean. Q Collar, check them out. All right, great company located in Wisconsin. And then Fly Route Drones, uh, just started working with them a couple weeks ago. We have two drones that we use for all of our 7-on-7s, all of our practices, summer stuff that we do. The eye in the sky doesn't lie. Get that angle with the drone. All right, check out Fly Route Drones. If you go to flyroute.com, use the promo code PLAYFAST, you can get 20% 20, 20 off of a certification course. That's right. You will get a certification course. They will teach you or your managers or your other coaches how to fly a drone, how to be compliant, all the things that you need to be doing. Eye in the sky doesn't lie. I love the drone angle. Make sure you check out Fly Route. All right, drones, and then as always, sting8740 at gmail.com. I've got clinic tape, $15 for the whole bundle, 20 hours worth of clinic tape. So if you're looking for something to do going into the spring, into the summer, all right, you're looking for football that you can learn, it's myself, it's other coaches, uh, other head coaches around here, some college coaches. We put together 10 or 11 different clinics that we got, 20 hours of football. Email me, $15. You can have every bit of it. It's private on my YouTube site, so you can only get it if you you email me and I send you the links, all right? So uh, when Jeff asked me about what he should be doing, middle school defense, and, and I kind of gave him my opinion. Uh, I would be a 4-2-5 team, all right? And I would, uh, I would play four down so that if we see uh, some 21 personnel or some heavier sets, all right, we are readily available to adjust it. It's easier to adjust to sometimes than odd front stuff is, all right? Um, I would be teaching it for setting the three technique, teaching kids how to understand who the three technique is, who the two eye is, trying to teach one of the defensive ends how to play a seven technique, how to play a five technique, teaching them block rec, getting all those things in. Because as a high school coach, the most important thing to me 
It's not so much the scheme, all right, where we are uh, in Northeast Florida, we don't have a lot of programs where they're going to run the exact same thing on the same coaching staff, 7 through 12. So when I was a head coach, it wasn't so much the scheme itself on, on, at the middle school level that I was worried about. I wanted to make sure that they were learning football, right? So they were learning how to get lined up. They were learning terminology. So if a one technique, a three technique, a four eye, a five technique, a seven technique, they were learning how to call strengths and switch sides. You know, you had a nickel that was learning how to go to the passing strength and a free safety that was learning how to go to the passing strength and a Mike that was learning to play to the three technique side and a Will that was learning to play to the open B gap side and a weak side safety that was learning to go away from the passing strength. All right, I feel like a 4 two, 5 gives them a lot of base, all right, information that they need to know that is going to help them at the next level regardless of what the high school that they attend plays, right? It's not about... Uh, you know, funneling them into a certain system, regardless of where those kids go to play. If you teach them a good, solid 4 2 5 structure, you teach them fronts, all right, you start talking about run fits, you start talking about block rec and how to take on blocks. To me, at the middle school level, that's the most important thing. The guys coaching it, I understand you need a scheme, all right, you need to win games, you want to be competitive, but we've got to get away from just kind of grab bagging calls to put calls together to win games. We've got to get away from blitzing every down just to make plays. We can do all those things to stay competitive, but at the end of the day, as a middle school coach, your ultimate job is you are preparing kids to play high school football. All right, that, That's what one of your jobs is. You are preparing kids to play. You're trying to make kids better football players. You're trying to teach them what it means to be disciplined, what it means to be part of a program, what it means to go through a practice plan, what it means like to be in shape, what it means to be a teammate, and, and, and to be reliable to people that are on your team. So those are all the things we should be teaching. And then on game night, of course you want to compete. Well, if you put in a 4, four two, 5 structure, if you get bigger personnel groups, all right, you've got yourself an even front construction, all right, what I would do is I would only play, all right, for me, I would not teach pattern match at that level. All right, that wouldn't be something I worried about. I wouldn't waste a ton of time doing that. I would have a cover three structure, I would have a cover two structure, I would have man free deals, and I would have zero deals. All right, now, here's why I would do those things. By teaching them a cover three structure. So if we teach them a, a cover three structure from a four, two, five setting, away from the nickel, we can teach them that we're always gonna rotate a safety down away from the nickel, we're always gonna rotate a safety to the middle of the field. We are gonna teach them how to play eight man fronts. Right? So this is going to be no different than playing old school balance 4-4 defense. We're just doing it with different personnel. Okay? So along with the run fits and open gaps and teaching defensive linemen how to block wreck and how to take blocks on, how do we play a base block, how do we play a down block, all right? How do we, what does it mean to spill? What does it mean to force, right? Those are all the things that kids need to be learning. In this structure, we can get all of those things. We can teach the nickel and the weak safety what it means to be force players in the run game. We can teach the guys up front how to block wreck off of different blocks. We can teach the Mike and the Will how to fit runs from an even front structure. Okay? And then when it comes to the passing game, we can teach kids the areas on the field that we've got to defend. Right? So that's one of the most important things I think you can teach to kids at a younger level, all right, is they need to understand that there's basically six underneath zones on the field that we've got to cover, right? So we've got a flat area and we've got a curl area, and we've got a hook area, right? And we've got a hook area, and we've got a curl area, and we've got a flat area. So at that level, what I would be trying to get kids to understand is where are those places on the field, okay? So as a kid, as a curl to flat dropper or a hook to curl dropper, where are they trying to get to? So now when you play a three deep scheme, all right, you can get kids to understand different landmarks of where the flat's going to be and what a curl flat dropper looks like, and what a hook curl dropper looks like, and what a hook curl and a curl flat dropper looks like. You can teach corners how to play a deep third technique and a safety to play a deep middle technique. So we get an eight man front, we get cover three, all right, which I would teach as a spot drop country cover three, not a pattern match, okay, because of the time involved and the amount of time it takes a pattern match. Just get kids to understand how to drop curl flat, how to drop hook curl, right? If you want to give them landmarks, give them landmarks and tell them that, hey, curl flat players, we want to be somewhere in between the numbers and the hash mark, right? So our drop needs to get us to that landmark. And the hook curl player, we need to be two yards inside the, the, the 
Hash mark. So now on this side, the hook curl player, two yards inside the hash mark. And the curl flat player, split the hash mark into numbers and teach them underneath zones and what the, what the flat areas are. So now you're teaching not only a coverage scheme, but you're teaching kids dimensions on the field. You're teaching them the buzzwords that they need to know. What is the flat? Coach, you keep yelling flat. I don't know what the flat is. What is the curl? What is the hook? So you get an eight-man front, okay, and then you get a chance to teach guys about dimensions and spots on the field and what are these six underneath zones that we need to cover and how are we going to do that. Okay, the even front stuff, the over front stuff gives you a chance to play a three technique and I would play a seven on the inside, I have a tight end, I think it's a little bit easier at that level. Okay, teaches you how to put a two eye or a shade away from the three technique. It gives you simple stunts if you want to, you can have two or three stunts for your interior linemen so you can work the blood game where those two go away. All right, you can work, all right, a closed B gap game on this side here where you take away an open B gap. All right, if you wanted to, you can get a stunt working on the front side where you can work just a twist game. All right, just simple movements that aren't that difficult to teach. It's teaching kids how to exchange gaps, right? How are we accounting for gaps? Teaching them run fits, teaching them what they need to do in an over front theory. All right, by playing 4 to 5 personnel, I think the next thing you can do is you can teach them some type of cover 2 scenario. Right, so because you're 4 2 5 and you're not 4 4, now we're going to play a lot of 4 4 structures that look like they're 4 4 defenses, but we're going to do it with 4 2 5. So that when we do it with 4 2 5 personnel, now we can take two high safeties and we can teach them how to be half players and we can teach the corners how to play traditional cover two defense so we can take the flat away with the corners if we're getting quick game or if we're having trouble with the ball really bouncing outside or going wide, we can't contain it. Now we can teach guys how to play cover two within the same structure. We have two deep safeties because we are playing 4-2-5. Now we can teach guys in cover two, there's your flat players there, there's your curl player, there's your hook side three, and there's your hook curl player on that side. So on this side, on the passing strength, we're teaching them how to flood out zones Right, Because on this side, we have a flat defender, we have a curl defender, and we have a hook defender. So this is what you would consider flooded out. We've got three guys underneath three zones. Well, away from the passing strength where they have left receivers, we're still working a hook curl guy, but we're working more of a true flat player. All right, And now we're teaching safeties how to play off a deep half and how to be deeper than everything on the field. All right, and how to play half the field and how to lean towards routes and break when the ball's in the air and all of our breaks should be forward, right? So now we've got them to where they understand a cover three structure, they understand a cover two structure. To me, as a former high school head coach, if the, the middle schools that I was involved with, all right, if they did just that and they taught block rec and they taught defensive linemen how to line up in certain techniques, and a couple, one or two stunts to move, and they taught linebackers how to fit runs, and they taught force guys what force meant, and they taught defensive ends what spill meant or box. If those were the things that were being taught, I would be extremely excited as a high, high school football coach. So when they get to me, I don't have to spend as much time teaching them. Right? So now we've got a cover two scheme, and we've got a cover three scheme. Okay? We've got a cover two scheme, and we've got a cover three scheme. So we've taught them landmarks. We've taught them zone defense. We've taught them, to me, what spot drop means. Again, I would not pattern match at that level. I would not play any of the stuff we're playing in high school. I would teach them spot drop defense. Get to landmarks. Square up. Vision and break off the ball when the quarterback makes a throw. Okay, that's what I would be teaching at the middle school level. I think it's simple. I think it's easy to do. I think it gives you a cover three and a cover two changeup. So it gives you different looks not only down to down, but week to week when teams are five wide or empty and then teams are all of a sudden in a phone booth, okay? And then I would always, for me, my pressures would become man-to-man -man pressures. They're simple, they're effective, all right? You're gonna say, well, maybe at the middle school we don't have, all right? At the middle school we don't have guys that can play man. You're gonna have to teach man anyways. High schools are gonna want you to teach man. You're gonna have to play man at some point all right, I don't know how much RPOs there are at the middle school, all right, but, you know, to me, 
I want them to understand a man concept. We've always taught we, we've already taught them how to play zones in cover three and cover two. All right. So if you wanted to get exotic with some zone pressures, you could certainly do that. What I would do as a composite is I would have cover three taught, cover two taught, and then I would have some man pressures taught so that I could send five or six. All right, so we're already in the perfect world. Depending on what you're seeing, we're in the perfect world now because we're playing five DBs. So we're in the perfect world where we can Right, we've already got four skill players. We can match up on skill players and play man to man, right? And now what we've got to be able to figure out is if we want to play man free. So we've got that extra, all right, DB there. That's the fifth DB we've got. That's the fifth skill player we've got, right? So now we can get ourselves just a simple, bring the will off the edge, all right, corner plays one. Nickel plays two, weak safety plays two, corner plays one, the mic plays the back, free safety spins to the middle of the field. Now we've got a five man deal and we're working on some man free stuff. So now we're carrying man drills. We're teaching kids to play man to man. We feel good that we can line up the formations. We're bringing either the wheel off the edge or if you wanted to make it difficult on a center, you want to plug the mic there. If you plug the mic, then obviously the wheel would have number three. Right? So now you're building in man concepts. You're teaching kids to play man to man. Because again, for me at the middle school level, all right, my idea would be I want to teach a three deep, I want to teach a two deep, and I want to teach kids how to play man. That's what I want to do. Okay? Now, can you zone pressure three under three? Sure you can. Can you zone pressure four under two? Sure you can. Can you six man zone pressure and play high? You can do any of those things you want. I'm looking when somebody asks me a question as a former high school head coach or as a defensive coordinator, I am telling you this is the composite of things that I want to see. I want to see them learn how to do those things on the back end. I want to see them learn how to spot drop. I want to see them learn how to play one high, two high structures, and I want to see them play man to man. Okay. Now, you could also get into your six man world, right? Because you've got five skill players. So you say, well, coach, I want to win games at the middle school level. I got to get after people. All right. I got to challenge people. All right, well, now you got the mic and the wheel. You can work your mic and wheel games inside. Free safety comes down and takes number three or the back, right? That was your third skill player, fourth, fifth. All right, so again, I'll do it in black so everybody can see it. You've got five skill players, five secondary players. So when you go to play man to man, you can play man free. All right, where you have a backer playing man to man and you have a safety that's in the middle of the field, or you can play zero stuff like we're playing right now. All right, so now you can get it to where you send, all right, guys inside interior pressures. You can make it real easy and just plug to where if you're in an over front, you can just plug the open A gap, plug the open B gap. All right, you got the mic and the wheel. Those are real simple things to do. You can cause all right, some problems for the O-line. You can pressure to make plays, all right? Anything, everything's out there, guys. This isn't really a, a video to tell you everything you should be doing. If you just ask my opinion on what I would like to see at a middle school level, this is what I would tell you, all right? This is the composite I would tell you, all right? And then again, just to... I know the one that everybody loves all the time when you need to do it. Everybody's going to want to bring two guys off the edge, right? So everybody's going to want to bring a nickel. Everybody's going to want to bring a will there, okay? Well, now when you do that, just make sure you understand that you're going to have to teach the free safety. You still have four skills if they were a one-back team. You still have four skills that are playing their four skills, and you've got a mic that's playing the back, and now you've got double edge pressure, all right? So you can get exotic with some of the pressures or, or at least different, I don't know how exotic you'd want to get, but just understand the time, the teaching, how much football these kids have played. To me, if you wanted to send six, I would keep it to where it's just the mic and the wheel going, all right? So a simpler way to do this for me would be leaving the nickel alone, walk the mic up to this edge, send the mic off the edge, leave the nickel there, leave the free safety there, all right? 
Now, why would I tell you to do that? Because I think if you let the if you leave the mic and the will as the blitzers, now you let the safeties be the cover guys. All right. So now when you teach them zero six man deals, it's always the same five in coverage. That's going to be easier for you to line up the formations. That's going to be easier for you to play exotics and different things because you may not have a ton of film that week, right? But at the end of the day, for me, what it's all about is I'm trying to give Jeff, and obviously there'll be some, you know, obviously there'll be wrinkles and things that you can do each week. But if you're talking about a brand new head coach, this is his first time being a head coach at the middle school level. Right? He's got to put a defense in. He played quarterback in high school. I coached against him in high school. Great quarterback. He punted, was a kicker at the University of Florida, scout team quarterback. He's got to coach defense for the first time. Right? So I want to give him, all right, I want to give him some type of simple toolbox at his level that he can teach. Right? So I want to give him even front. All right? I want something that can become eight man front. I want to give him very simple. Spot drop, defensive theories. Cover three, cover two, spot drop. I want him to be able to play man to man because these are all the things that I would like to see when I was a high school head coach. Okay, Those are all the things that I would have appreciated if they were being taught. I want to see block rec. I want you to teach kids what a one technique, a two eye, a three technique, a four eye, a seven technique. I want kids to understand what run fits mean from a structure. Right? So if you give them an even front structure and you give them what everybody would say, even spacing, eight-man spacing, however you want to look at it, term it, I want those kids to have a set understanding of how to do that. Because what's going to happen at the middle school level, when I watch games, I watch games for 20 years on whatever home field I was coaching at. So whether it was Ridgeview, Baker, Orange Park High School, I watch games on my field every year, and sooner or later they turn into Katie Bar to doors, everybody's going. Double eagle defense, everything. Great to stay competitive, great to try and win games. Those coaches want to win games, I get it. If you're asking me as a high school head coach, and when Jeff asks my opinion, this is what I'm going to tell him. Right? I'm going to tell him 4 2 five, even front. Eight-man fronts, teach cover three, teach cover two, teach man-to-man, -man. get a couple blitzes that you like that you can use in short yardage or you can use when you need to make plays. Right? Because I'm not going to tell him what I think is going to be call, call, call to stay competitive. I don't want it to be about calls. I want it to be about him having the right experience with those kids teaching them how to play football the way it's meant to be taught, all right, and the way it's meant to be played so that they're learning things that they can use in high school. So I hope this video helps some of you younger guys out or if you're coaching at the middle school level. Just my idea, again, coming from a head coach in high school when I had to watch middle school football, this is what I would want to see at the younger level. These are the things that I would want to be developed at the younger level. And then obviously on your game night, call whatever you want, do whatever you want. If you want to blitz every down, Blitz every down. I would just like to see these things worked on. I think they give you a chance to be successful. I, get, I think they give you a chance to compete. All right, And I think it's giving middle school kids a chance to understand what football is really going to be about when they get to the next level. All right, So make sure you click that subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you turn the notifications on. You know every time we do a video or we go on YouTube Live, thumbs up, thumbs down if you like the content, don't like it. Uh, comment every time you leave a comment. Uh, I will try to respond to your comment. Again, this is my opinion as a high school head coach and as a friend of somebody who is asking me what he thinks he should be doing, this is what I think he should be doing. You don't have to agree with it. You can do it different. If you're a middle school coach, you can say that you're a double eagle team or you're a 3-3 stack team. That's your business. That's your team. You do what you want. All right. If you're asking me, this is very simplistic. All right. It gives you all the things that you need to cover a wide variety of offenses without the amount of time that you're going to need to have all kind of other nuances, right? You've got limited time, coaches maybe that haven't coached defense before. This is simplistic. It gives kids spot drop. It gives kids run fits. You're teaching techniques, and you're teaching kids how to play man-to-man -man with a little bit of pressure. All right, so hopefully this video helps you guys out. Appreciate everything you do for me, everything you do for play fast football, getting closer to spring, closer to the end of the year. Hang in there. We're almost there. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. Support all our partners. See you guys next time.